This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Well, joining us today is Jason Brewer, the CEO of Marula Mining. Thank you very much for your time, Jason. I know you're in London. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a very busy few days here and um, heading back to Nairobi this afternoon. But but London's been good. Very good. Excellent. Time. What have you been doing? What was the sort of purpose of the visit? I know you also put out to uh, invite shareholders to come and uh, have a chat with you. Did, uh, did many turn up? Yeah, we got half a dozen or so oh. and on, on Tuesday afternoon. So spent a good three and a half hours there. Big open Q&A session. Okay. Uh, just to, to clarify any points they had, any matters they wanted to raise and, and just give them an update. Um, nothing material in terms of inside information or anything like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's good for for directors of companies to get out there and speak to shareholders and and give them a bit more substance behind what goes out in the announcements and also how a company actually operates and and tries to achieve and deliver on its strategies. Okay. Well, I wonder if you can perhaps give us some uh, yeah some some things that you uh, discussed with those guys yesterday. We've got a bit of a general update really across Marula uh, in terms of uh, what's going on throughout the course of uh, the month of May as we head into the summer here. So I mean, Blesberg Lithium, first of all, what's the situation? What's going on? We're getting prepared this month and for the rest of this quarter to to start deliveries to Fujax. Fujax is the UK trading company. Um, they've all got also got offices in Cape Town and Mombasa in Kenya and, and Nairobi. Uh, we entered into an offtake agreement there for our, our spodumene product out of Blesberg. So we've had them on site a couple of weeks ago. They're logistics guys. They actually have an office about 30 Ks from the mine. Um, so right. the logistics guys came on site. We also had them come on site to take some tantalum, some coltan samples as well, because we'll be looking at doing some sales of that to them once those assays come through. So Blesberg, we're pushing ahead there. Um, it's one area of disappointment uh, has been the delay in getting the, the second XRF ore sorter up there, which is the okay. Tomra one. The Tomra one was actually located in South Africa and it was located on a coal mine in, 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 uh, in Pumalanga, uh, about a thousand kilometers away. Um, because of the nature of that joint venture, which was being terminated, it was delays getting to us. That's all now been resolved. And we're finalizing the quotes for six semi-trailers to drive a thousand Ks through South Africa and deliver it to, to Springbok, where it'll un- undergo final up- upgrades, repairs, et cetera. So getting that in and on site over the course of this month will really ramp up our ability to produce not just the spodumene ore, the feldspars, the tantalums, and all the other minerals that make up that Blesberg operation. So, yeah, plenty okay. of activity there at Blesberg. Good. Well, you you, you said, of course, this sales this this uh, in in May. So that sounds like that's certainly still on track. There. Have you got any ex- revenue expectations? Um, yeah, it'd be inappropriate to put out revenue expectations at the moment. I'm actually meeting here in London later this morning, Richard Hawkin from Fujax, who's their main commodity trader. I've known him for well over ten years. Um, and he's been our point of contact on this. So we're meeting up with him, not just to discuss the, the spodumene and, and the sales, et cetera, but also to talk about the, the coltan, the tantalum assays, because we want mm-hmm. that. With those revenues, um, yeah, we've got, we've got our own, call it in-house targets, which we want to achieve for a group for May um, and, and for the rest of this quarter. But look, for May, I guess it's fair to say we want to see a seven-figure revenue stream coming through. Okay. Um, that's going to be a push. I'll be I'll be very honest, but um, that will certainly increase in June as we get additional production coming through, not just through at Blesberg, but also from the manganese okay. as well. Well, I'm sure you'll be updating as soon as you can on uh, on if you put forecasts out or indeed, of course, uh, actual sales for the month or the quarter. However, you want yep. to report to the market in terms of the first trucks arriving when. When are you hoping? And that's part of the discussions today with Richard, just okay. going through the process because clearly those once those trucks are there, they've then got to take it down to Cape Town and actually load it all up onto the 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 freighter ships there for delivery and probably in, in all likelihood going to China. So we've mm-hmm. just got to coordinate with Richard now and make sure everything is on track. You know, the assaying at site, the assaying at port, 
all the protocols, expert permits, and, and so on. So export permits, I should say. So there is a process. We've got a great team at Blesberg. Um, they'll go through that. Um, obviously, we did some trial shipments last year out to China, which went through extremely well, and a lot of demand there for that material already. But um, no, no, that's just a process. Like I say, I'm, that's one of the reasons I'm in London today to, to deal okay. with uh, Fujax. Good, 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 good. Okay, well, let's get a bit of an update on uh, Larry Soro, the manganese mine as well there. What's the, what's the latest here? Yeah, that's that's moved ahead gangbuster speed. So, you know, with the work in upgrading, servicing, maintaining the process plant up there is underway through our consultants. And when Richard Lloyd was in Nairobi just last week, he was able to meet with them and go through the plans there. Uh, we appointed the new mine manager, Big mm -hmm. Ben. And um, Ben is big, he's freaking tall, um, but he's, and he's got a big task on his hand, huge task on his hand. Um, we've met with Scan Global, who are doing the transportation. We're getting ready for deliveries there. We've already got material in Nairobi. So, yeah, Larisoro, the first production blast under our watch. Um, I was hoping to get in this week, but it will happen early next week. And then material going through the the upgraded process plant and sales going through later this month as well and right through to an existing chinese company um that have been taking some of that product back to their manganese smelters in china mm -hmm. but also hopefully through to fujax as well because there was i think a two three thousand ton delivery that we'd, we'd scheduled for them so mm -hmm. yeah larisora is looking good and okay very quick low risk cash flow so that's that's why it's kind of accelerated up the list of priorities for us because it is a low risk project and one of delivering cash flow almost immediately, as you've seen. Okay, so cash flow coming from yeah, the lithium, potentially tantalum, but also manganese well, from, from this month. Okay, yeah, good. Very good to hear. And and, and the team expanding there with uh, with Ben, as you say, the new mine manager taking care of uh, the operations there at Larry. Sorry, you also made another appointment, did you as well, uh, a lady from Copper 360? Yeah, we've we've had Yana. She's been on board a few months now, um, up there in the Northern Cape at Blesberg. And even though everybody considers Blesberg to be that lithium tantalum mine, there's a huge mineral suite up there, not just at Blesberg, but at some of, on some of the surrounding licenses. And her background was with Copper 360, and we've we've got her actively involved with some of our copper activities, certainly up at Canusi. And she's actually just completed a report last week which was basically an optimization study for what we have in mind for Canusi. And that's kind of changed our, our thought process there. Um, with copper prices doing so well, yeah, our initial plans to produce a, a DSO product and achieve, mm. say, a 20% kind of payability per tonne of ore, uh, what we're now proposing gives us over an 80% payability. So you, you're talking a four, four and a half times uplift in earnings. And with that in mind, just putting our heads around it and getting our planning in place properly, you know, even though it's going to take us a few more months, that first month's production is going to well make up more than any kind of lost earnings, lost potential in that period. And then going forward, you're effectively earning four or five times more. Yes, there's a bit more capital to be spent there at Canusi, but given our relationship with Quinton's investment vehicle, um, capital is not really an issue for us, accessing capital to build these plants is not an issue. And, and particularly as we move to him closing off that first tranche of 500 million out of his fund in the next four to six weeks. So, so yeah, right. Young's come on at a very opportune time and she's really looking at the full mineral suite up there at, at Blesberg and around Blesberg, but she's also having some huge impact on our thinking and plans and expansion development for Canusi up there in Tanzania. Excellent. Good. And it's good to hear that first, that 500 million in four. That's a lot of money. You, can you spend it all? <laughs> um, unfortunately, not all of it's coming our way, but um, we've been through the provisional allocations. I sat down there with the QGC team two weeks ago in South Africa and the COO of AUO, which is the investment arm there. Um, there's $26.5 million, which they want to allocate towards the manganese. And that's both the manganese at Larisora, but also the one we're looking at at the coast at Khalifi. That's a lot of money to build some manganese assets there, that's for sure. Uh, but it gives us the ability to move it forward quite quickly. Um, there's 38, or is it, no, sorry, 28 million 
which has been allocated towards Blesberg, plant expansion, um, leaching facilities, putting in place the carbonate plant, and so on. So we're going to be not hard push, but we'll be we'll be very quick at, to spend that to get that producing a much more high value lithium product. And then I think at Nuri Nuri, that's a bit earlier stage. I think it's about five million allocated for this year. And then um, at Canusi, there's a significant amount of, of capital there. So okay. yes, getting that that funding coming through over the next four to six weeks through very simple debt structures, you know, it gives us the confidence to really push ahead and accelerate those those assets very quickly. Okay, good. And you mentioned the uh, Noyo Nyori there, that's the, the graphite project, isn't it? So, I mean, what's going on with that one? You say that there's less money allocated there. Is that less of a focus or? No, it's, it's, it's not actually, but it's it's one which has really moved up the, the pecking order quite quickly. We only just recently got the assay results back. Um, last month, we reported the assay results, which are all incredibly positive. And we've expanded there. You know, beginning of last year, we had, what, 10 mining licenses. We've now got over 30. And our footprint has increased X hundred percent. So mm -hmm. for Nuri Nuri, it's it's working with our processing consultants, and you've got Erudite who we've used in um, at Blesberg. They they did a massive um, graphite plant development in Madagascar. They're actually working in Tanzania on uh, an Australian listed company's graphite project. So we're working with them on an accelerated process to. Um, to get the best value out of that jumbo flake that we see there. Okay. So we want to get that there. Our neighbors, local miners are delivering that basically as direct shipping ore. There's no processing for some of our neighbors. They're just putting in sea containers and they're delivering that to Asian and, and Indian investors. So Nuri Nuri is up there and we see graphite as being a big part of our business, not just in Tanzania, but also in Kenya too. Okay. Good. Well, I wonder if I can just ask you perhaps what your thoughts are of the current share price and what, what you think perhaps is going on. I mean, I don't know if investors that you met in the last couple of days as well also uh, raised uh, concerns about this. Yeah, absolutely. And they've got every right to. The, the share price over the past month has performed terribly. Um, and yeah, it hurts. You know, personally, when you put this much time, effort, and call it passion into a job. It's not really a job. It, it, you put this much energy to to build a company and get it to a point where you've got you're going to deliver on production on sales. To see the share price where it's at is yeah, it, it hurts. It cuts deep. Mm. And I know for investors when they look at their investment positions and so on, from being up multiple times, they're at break even. They're actually you know their investment is below water. So that hurts. What's the cause of that? I think, look, there's general nervousness in the market, Mark. You've, you've seen that. Um, is that junior commodity space, are we reaching that, that low? That, you know, are we really there now? And is it, is it up all uphill from here? I hope so. Um, but I think, you know, investors are, are very much, um, particularly in London, they're, they're very nervous. There's, there's not been too many success stories for them. And they're focused on capital preservation. You know, there's been a lot of companies which have disappointed shareholders and where they've lost their entire investment. Um, so you can understand investors' concerns in the retail, the junior mining space. Uh, mm. Isn't that massive pool of capital that was several years ago? Mm. That certainly helps. And then clearly people are looking for fast returns. Investors' timeframes now have gone from months, from years, down to days and weeks. That's a reality. That's what we've got to deal with as, as a company. We've got to make people remain as shareholders in our company and stop people thinking that the grass is greener elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So we've got to constantly deliver. And if there's delays, if there's potential issues, then people get nervous. I'd like to think that we've eliminated a lot of that. Yes, some of our timeframes have slipped because we've focused on other opportunities, which I think will deliver more in the, but not just the short term, the long term. But I think, yes, we've seen our share price come off. I think it'll bounce back very quickly over the course of this quarter when people see revenue streams, production, when they see some of the project opportunities that are coming to us now, which we never could have seen 12 mm. months. So yeah, the share price, look, rest assured, I'm hurting as well, Mark. I think I'm sitting there as the company's largest shareholder at the moment as well. Mm. Uh, yeah, I've, I've bought shares up at 12 and a half, 13 and a half, 
So some of my investments are well down. Yeah. Uh, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed for investors. I'm, const- I'm It's not as if I'm putting my head in the sand and ignoring the situation. Yeah, I'm dealing with it. As I said, I spent three and a half hours with investors on, on Tuesday afternoon, and it was an open Q&A for them to ask anything about Marula, what we're doing, why I they felt the share price was where it was at, and how we address it. And I think the key thing to address it is to deliver and deliver on the timeframes that we set ourselves. And unfortunately, we do set quite aggressive timeframes. Mm. For me, the message I've taken away from London is don't get complacent. The hard work's still there to be done and keep delivering and, and get the cash flows, get the revenue streams, get those profits and get them announced as quickly as possible. Yeah, indeed. I would tend to agree with you, Jason. It is quite tough. You've got to keep delivering, keep giving that uh, that next sort of thing to, to look forward to for that uh, perhaps that in, in, uh, instant gratification sort of appetite that, uh, that, that the markets are demanding at the moment. But I mean, looks like you're almost there, really. Revenue production and of course the the cash coming from from the the Quintin group there that uh, means that you're, you're not actually at the mercy of uh, of the capital markets. So it certainly sounds like a pretty active summer for uh, for the company yeah i think whilst the english investors are you know sitting in their deck chairs down on brighton beach they can um rest assured that things are moving ahead quite quickly look for junior companies the share price is important when they're raising capital okay that's that's the key thing if they've got to raise capital in tough markets and their share price is down then shareholders are going to get diluted through mm-hmm. a discounted capital raising we are very fortunate and i cannot emphasize enough we're so fortunate that we don't have to go down that route, that we've secured capital. We secured capital well over, what, geez, 14 months ago. We've got this funding. And then we've got a, the benefits of such a benefactor who's then secured this billion-dollar fund, and he wants to allocate capital to us for major capital items. So share price counts when you're raising capital, clearly, um, and it counts when you're selling stock. I'm not selling stock. I'm not selling stock. I wish I could buy stock. But I can't, unfortunately, Um, because at these prices, I'd like to think it's a steal. Um, Probably can't even say that, but I think it's great value. Um, And hopefully with a bit of the news flow to come out in the coming days, weeks, then we'll be in a a period where we will be able to buy. Uh, We do have our audit going on, um, which does create um, trading restrictions on us. That audit, that those annual accounts will go out on time. And uh, we'll be able to proceed into the English summer and um, certainly give a few of our English shareholders something to cheer about uh, whilst they're watching the cricket. I'm not sure if it's an Ashes series this year, but I'm sure they'll be enjoying the cricket anyway. Well, thank you very much, as always, Jason Brewer, for your time, the CEO of Marula Mining. Mark, thank you very much. Always great to talk to you. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.